Okay. 15 minutes delay, it's more or less on time here in Spain. Good morning and welcome to Universidad Politécnica de Madrid. Welcome to the Civil Engineering School. Bienvenidos, bienvenidas a la Escuela de Ingenieros de Caminos, Canales y Puertos de Madrid. First of all, thank you for being here with us today. This is a very special day for us as we will be hosting the first on-site event of the first edition of the Master in Digital Twins to the, during the three next, next days. We are glad to be supported by representatives of our fellow travelers in this challenging journey, like the Col de Pont de Paris, BME from Budapest and Technical University of Istanbul. Thank you also to our Vice Rector. Muchas gracias, Asun, for being here. Thank you to all the speakers. Thank you to our EU officer, Gabriel Risola, for your support during this couple of years. And a very special welcome to all the students of the first edition of the Master in Digital Twins for Infrastructures and Cities. This school was founded 222 years ago, and since then it has been the heart of the Spanish construction companies. To be so, our identity has always been to try to respond to their needs to anticipate the skills needed for the civil, for the future civil engineers. And this master is a clear example of that. We have sometimes wondered if our project, the master and in general, our bet for the digital twins, didn't come up too early. While most of our sector is struggling to get adapted to the BIM impositions, to the BIM impositions. After one year of the project and being half time of the master, we are more convinced than ever that it was the right decision at the right moment and that it has also been the right decision for the learners. We know that we are training leaders of the technology to be consolidated in five, seven years, a next step forward the digitalization of the sector. It goes alongside with the solid support of the European Union the change in the digital requirements of the public tenders, and more importantly, the evolution of technology and the computing capacity. We also know that the industry has a shared vision, which is part of the reason of the unanimous support that we have found in them, and that one of our key pillars for the success of their competitiveness is this new era, in this new era is hiring and training skilled professionals. And as you know, you can always count on us with us, come with us in these kind of matters. We really hope that you enjoy today's morning session. We will have the pleasure to learn from very well respected professors and industry professionals of different areas of technology related to digital twins. First, as a member of our Royal Academy of the Language of the Spanish language will illuminate on us on the impact of AI and ontology. Eduard Loscos, Loscos will dissert on the different initiatives in place around normalization and standardization of the digital models and twins in the built in the built -in environment. And Tyres and Ineco will also show us examples and cases of use of the application of AI and digital twins to the industry. Thank you all for helping us. That is all from my side. Let me just give the floor to Matthew Arquier Professor of Ecole de Pont de Paris and Director of the Master of Digital Twins. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Rosé Miguel, for the introduction. Uh, dear colleagues, faculty members, learners, everyone, so good morning and thank you for attending this first event in Madrid. So I'll be brief. I just wanted to start with a little anecdote. Um, nearly one year ago, uh, I was at Ecole des Ponts. And uh, before I was uh, academic director of the master program, I was teaching every week at Ecole des Ponts and witnessed some colleagues at Ecole des Ponts. And uh, he was working with other people from Madrid, Budapest, Turkey, and Bucharest. And they were challenged to deliver a new master program, a brand new master program on digital twins for infrastructure and cities. 89 ECTS credits, 27 different courses, more than 70 teachers, a series of conferences every two weeks, 
free on-site events and the capstone project. The task was huge. And I didn't think it could be possible to achieve that in such short notice. But they did it. They did it. After several months of hard work, they did it. Then, so after missing all that fun designing the master, I was appointed academic director last summer. We had our inaugural class last October. And after four months of intense courses, we are finally here together in Madrid. And as academic director, you can't imagine how pleased I am to be here with you all today for the next three days. Hence, first of all, I want to take this moment to thank again all the faculty members who worked tirelessly to deliver this master program. And with a special attention, of course, to UPM faculty members and Caminos for hosting us right now for the next three days. Obviously, I also have a special thanks to all our 19 different learners. Whether you are able to make it with us today, uh, or you are maybe um, for the one who can't uh, seeing us online, uh, you trusted us by joining this first cohort. Not only have you demonstrated a lot of motivation and interest in the subject during the past few months, but you also managed to do so while continuing to work in your respective companies. And we know it has been very, very challenging for you. So I really want to congratulate you again for reaching the second milestone of our program. Thank you a lot. Regarding our event for the next three days, we will dive deeper into digital twins world, deployment, some applications with different lectures, workshops, and with the official launch of the Capstone projects tomorrow. And I take also this opportunity to thank all the mentors who also decided to be involved in this adventure. And some of them are already with us today. We will also have some informal moments between all these activities to exchange more casually between our work experiences and all the remarks you surely have on the master. As we already told you, your insight and feedback are key to improving the upcoming next terms of courses and more generally the next edition of the master programs. So please, take advantage of these three days to widen your knowledge of digital twins, uh, of course, but also to exchange ideas between us, to establish new concrete connections. Because after all, even for an online master on the digital transformation of the cities and civil engineering with Zoom session, virtual machine, chat GPT for some, some time to times, and 3D modeling. I guess we can still agree on one thing, like gathering physically from time to time, face to face in 3D, is the best way to strengthen all our relationships. Thanks again for joining us for the next three days. Enjoy the event. Thank you very much. And now, I give the floor to Nacho. Yeah. Okay, hello, good morning everyone. I'm really happy to introduce Professor Asuncion Gomez Perez to you. Uh, Asun is an outstanding professor at UPM. And being professor, you know that this means that you are a teacher, you are a scientist, you are a manager, you are a bookkeeper, you are a sales agent, and you are a volunteer. Many things that may cause frustration for normal or common human beings, but I think this is not at all the case of fashion. I'm going to give just three examples. I knew her for the first time as a manager, but not as an usual manager. She's the Vice Rector for Research, Innovation and Doctoral Studies of UPN. UPN is one of the largest public universities in Spain with more than 200 years of history and tradition and complexity. And we are, in fact, we are the first university in number of patents, the first university in Spain in number of uh, in European funding, and of course, this is the result of a collective effort of a lot of people. But for sure, having an excellent vice rector like Asun has done in the last seven years is, uh, is, is, is incredible. But uh, she's handled this so good, so well, because she knows very well what research is. Because she's also an outstanding researcher. And this is the reason why she's here today. She studied informatics, and she went to uh, Stanford. And then she came back and founded a research group on uh, artificial intelligence and ontologies. 
it doesn't matter what metrics you want to use, number of articles, number of citations, number of research projects, international co collaboration, whatever you want, uh, points out that Asun is one of the very best researchers of UPM, of Spain, and of the world. And I don't know, Asun, what you are going to tell today, but maybe uh, if artificial intelligence is going to uh, surpass uh, or, uh, or is about to surpass human intelligence, but I can assure that in the case of Asun, this is going to be really hard for the machines. <laughs> but last but not least, there is a, a huge honor. She, she has received many prizes and recognition, but she was recently appointed as member of the Spanish Royal Academy of the Language. Spanish is one of the most spoken languages in the world, and this is one of the most reputed institutions in the country. She is one of the very few female members of this academy, and she is the first scientist in its history. Uh, she's holding the Q chair, a small Q chair, because the chairs are named as the letters of the alphabet. I don't know if this was intentional or it was a, a serendipity, because, yes, here in Spain and in many parts of the world, not in France, but the keyboards of the, uh, starts with letter Q, and she's holding letter Q. And she's there not because the academy wants to just to try multidisciplinarity, but because they are aware that artificial intelligence is going to disrupt the, the evolution of the Spanish language and all the languages because machines are starting to talk and they are talking better every day. And also because they see the opportunity of the artificial intelligence to support their, uh, their mission as an academy. So, Asun, thank you very much for having accepted to deliver this lesson, but before giving you the floor, I want to say a last word for the audience. I hope that you are enjoying and with the master program and that you are learning a lot. And I hope that you will be the leaders of the digitalization of civil engineering because we, as the Royal Academy of the Language, we understand that the future has to be digital. And if you succeed in many years from now, maybe you can look back in time and please remember this precise instant in time because when somebody will ask you how you did that, you could say, okay, I did that, I did that because I could see farther. And I saw farther because I was standing on the shoulder of giants. Please believe me that Asun is one of the giants that you are going to cross in your lives. Thank you. Okay, good morning everyone. And Nacho, thank you a lot for, for this really outstanding presentation of myself. So, so it's a, bit, a big responsibility to talk now here based on, on that. Okay, I'm going to talk about artificial intelligence in, in digital twins. And uh, let's say the, the setting is, is the following. We have the, the physical world, and, and there we, are, we have processes, we have objects, and also we have a lot of interconnected, interconnected systems that exchange a lot of data between, between them. And we want to move them into the digital world. And, and this implies that everything is based on zeros and, and one, which is the language being used by the, the computer. So, so, so in this setting, I mean, we, we are collecting a lot of, lot of data from, from, from these uh, objects and, and processes and interconnected systems. And we need to create models to represent the, the the, the data that, that we collect and then to represent the objects. We need to manage the data. We need to integrate and, and, and uh, the data coming from different systems. This means that we, we need to, then to, to make them interoperable. We need also to, to make data governance in the sense that some data could be public, other data could be closed. Some data could be sometimes open, sometimes closed. and with the data, we can, of course, make analytics, reasoning, making decisions, and, and learning. And, and artificial intelligence is in, in most of these, of these processes. So the goal of this talk is to, to explore a bit where data came from, what does AI, AI do with this data, and uh, what is allowed to do with the data, because we cannot do with the data whatever we, we want. So, so in this world of digital data, we, we have different type of providers. So we have uh, city halls, we have governments, we have a lot of devices connected into 
the Internet of Things, we have a lot of software and programs that are providing the digital, the digital print and, 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 um, and, uh, um, and, and allow us, and, and, and these digital systems trace everything we do in, in Internet, and, and, and of course, we, we have a lot of information that we put in social media. Of course, the data come from, from different domains, and the main problem is that the data comes in, in heterogeneous format. I mean, let's say we have Excel files, we have databases, we have uh, words, we have uh, an, a, a, a test, we have information on the map, com data coming from, from sensors, and so on and so forth. And of course, an additional problem is the data is in, in goes beyond English language, so we have data in all our languages, and, and, and then we need to take care of privacy and also the, the, the licenses. And, and uh, this is what is happening when, when we do systems related with, 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 da with data, and, and in the case of also of digital twins. So, so here you can see, I mean, if, if you are not from Madrid, you can see on this picture some beautiful places from, from, uh, from Madrid. And uh, these are objects in the cities. And uh, the, these objects, the palace, the Retiro Park, the, the hospital, the, the museum, the Santiago Bernabeu, and, uh, and, and the buses, I mean, all of them have sensors. who are monitoring many different parameters in the, in the building. And, but there are also some kind of digital twins in, in, in the city because all of them, they, they are taking the, the data. And uh, this data uh, has some kind of characteristics, and it, this is taken from the data spaces promoted by the European Commission, and, uh, and, and we need to take care of the data sovereignty and also transparency. We need to interconnect the, the data and to make them interoperable at the, at the semantic level, which means that all of us, we understand, or all the programs understand the same about a particular data. It is important to mention that sometimes we have different sources that are providing the data, and many times the value of the data is not the same, and, and, and also sometimes the, the data are overlapping. So we are dealing with problems like incompleteness, sometimes other times redundancy of the data, and, and, uh, and other times uh, complementarity on, on, on the data. And what is art doing the artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence is aggregating the data, connecting the data, verifying the consistency of the, the data, making decisions, reasoning with the data, and learning from, from data, okay? So, 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 so this, is the, this is the setting in which we, we are. When, when we are talking about buildings and sustainable cities, I mean, one of the, the aspects is, is mobility. And, and, and all of us, we, we know that we have the sustainable development goals that at some point in, in this context appear, in, in, in this context appear, and when we are talking about, let's say, uh, mobility, we are talking about car sharing, uh, ride sharing, smart, parkings, bike sharing, and so on and so forth. And we also have, the, in real time, the, the, the schedules of the, of the, of the buses and, the, and also trains, and so on and so forth, okay? So, so the, which one is the, the problem? The problem is that if we are analyzing this uh, mobility domain, so we are talking about complementarity, because, uh, I mean, the, the user could think on taking the bus or taking the train or taking the, the, the metro. We are talking also about information uh, silos in the sense that every provider has its own data inside in its systems, but most of the time they don't share the data. They are not aggregated in, in a unified uh, portal, for instance. Also, the data comes in, in heterogeneous formats because they are depending on the, on the um, for instance, on the, on the sensors or on the language 
being used or in the format being used by, by the company. Also, we could have heterogeneous model, models, so think on time. Are we representing time using the, the British mm, format or, or the, 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 the format we, we are using here in Spain? Also heterogeneous access and also heterogeneous languages. So, so in order to make these objects in the digital world in, interoper interoperable, we need to solve m many problems related with uh, heterogeneity language heterogeneity uh, at, at the, from the human perspective, language heterogeneity from the, the, the machine perspective, and also the, the, the heterogeneity in the, in the semantics, in what the data means. So th this is a very trivial example. So, so, so suppose that we have a camera that observes uh, the, the speed of the car, and, uh, and uh, the camera is observing, the data is 35 kilometers per hour, and the semantics is related with the car and the number and the unit of measure. Okay, so from from something the, that that we read, we need an object which is the car. We have a property which is the speed. We have a value which is 35, and we have a unit of measure which is 35 kilometers per hour. And the same if it is observing another another car. So, but, but which one is the problem? The, the problem is that we have many different devices doing, mm, taking the measure. So, so, so we have the camera. We have also inside the car that we could say, if it is not digital or digital, that the speed of the car is 36 kilometers per hour. If we have the sensor on the wheel, the wheel would say that it is 35 kilometers per hour, or if the, we have a sensor, on, on the road, the speed could be th 33 kilometers for, 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 for an hour. So, so which one is the real speed of, of, of the car? And, uh, and also the, 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 the measures that we take refers to different things. Because we can say that if we have only one car, we can say that that car has a speed. And, uh, uh, sorry. and uh, this is duplicated. We can say that the car in the blue area has a speed of 36 kilometers per hour. So, so we, I, I need sometimes to represent the topology and the geometry of where the, the object is. And, and, and for that, I need a property which is named contains in order to say that the, the car is in, inside a particular, in, in a particular area. And if in this area I have another, another car in the blue area, I need to say that this is a different object. Okay, and I need to identify the, 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 the new car. And, and additionally, I could include more and more data saying that there is no accident, there is low pollution, or there is no traffic jump in the blue, in the blue area. So, 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 so we can complicate a lot the, the example in the sense that, that we, can have, we can have hundreds of sensors taking um, different, different data. So if, if we move into, into another domain, uh, let's suppose that, that, that I, I, I want that I am now in, in a city when I have different type of buildings for, for any of them I, I could, uh, uh, indoor or, out, or outdoor, I could measure the noise, the air quality, the, temp the temperature, the humidity, the precipitation, so on and so forth, so let's say, different parameters in, in the green zones. We can also measure the environmental condition, the soil conditions. We can also see how we use the different spaces, okay, and how people moved in, in parks or on the street. And uh, in parkings, we can have uh, cameras. We, we can analyze the parking occupancy, the trajectory of cars. I mean, let's say we, we can measure ev everything that we have <laughs> In the, in the real world. But, but the, the point here is that in addition to measuring things of physical objects, we need to go when we are talking about digital twins about how we integrate the data, including the data provided by, by people, because at the end we are also, let's say, we are physical objects in the real world and we are also uh, digital 
objects because we are providing a lot of information. So, so, so this implies that we, we, we need to go beyond the, the data that are coming from, from the physical, but and we need to go also into the data provided by the biological, who are, who, who are we. And, uh, and, and, and this implies that we need to analyze how people behave, how people are organized, and uh, social relations of also of, of, of people in, in, the, in the digital twin sphere. But, but in, in addition to, to the data, we cannot forget about the metadata. Let me explain. If, if I say uh, it is 37 degrees, 37 degrees implies that could be the physical temperature, it could be the outdoor temperature, it could be the inside temperature of the building, it could be an angle, all of, all of us, we are engineers, it could be uh, the temperature of, of a liquid in a chemical lab. So, 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 so the number itself of 37 means nothing, okay? So, so we need to provide a lot of metadata, which are the data about the data, in order to say how I got the data, with which device, if it is not numerical, in which language, who are the licenses of, of, of the data, which one is the geolocation of, of, of the data, and, and also the space and, and temporal information, okay? So, so, so if, if we are building these digital twins, we cannot invent the terminology. I mean, we, I, I, cannot, I cannot express what is a sensor using my own vocabulary in Spanish or in French or, or in another language. I mean, we need to agree in a common model for representing the information that we get from the, the, the devices, okay? And for that, the consortium of the World Wide Web, which is named the W3C Consortium, provides vocabularies for representing all these dimensions, okay? So, so and if all of us, we use the, the same vocabulary, we can understand each other. And uh, in the case of digital twins, the different applications and the different systems can talk with each other, okay? If they use the same vocabulary yeah, and they use the same language and if, if they use the same syntax. But the, the data spectrum that we have goes from closed data, let's say financial information, or a close data that the different governments have or city, city halls have, the, the national security data to open data that the, the open data, like the timetable of the buses or, or, or trains. And in the middle, we have some data that sometimes could be open and sometimes could be closed, okay? Depending on, on the permission. So uh, we also have big data, we also have small data, we have governmental data, we have commercial data, we have personal data, okay? So, so, so the spectrum is really, is really wide and, and, and we have, in addition, the multilingual aspect on, on that. There is something which is the, the open data stars, that it is something in order to facilitate this change of, of, of data. And this was created by, this, this nomenclature was created by Tim Berners-Lee. So we, we say that one data has one start if we put the data on the web, okay? We say that the data has to start if we put the data in a Excel format. The data has three starts if we use non-proprietary formats for exchanging the data between organizations. So instead of using an Excel, we can use a, a CCV uh, file. 
and we have a four stars, uh, a four stars data if we identify URIs, which are a kind of URL that we are we are using URL on the web. So URI are for representing the, the the data. So then I have a data, and then which is identified by this unique identifier, unique resource identifier, and other resource can point to my da data, okay? So in that way, I'm persisting the data. And um, the data would have five stars if the data is connected with other data on internet, okay? And this is the, the, this is the, the way in which, in, which, in, in which different administrations and governments and companies and people are providing open data on, on the web. So when we are working with the, all this type of data in different formats and so on, we cannot forget the data value chain. I mean, let's say we, we cannot take a data and then do mm, analytics on, on the data. We need to go through some kind of process in order to understand which one is the, wh where are the data and, and, and the metadata or the physical object that I want to transform into, or I want to use in my digital twin. And the data could be some, some video that is coming from st with streaming, documents, databases, web, Excel files, database, etc. We need to prepare the data. I mean, we, we, we need to analyze if, if the data is protected, if the data is curated, if the data has quality, how can I store and retrieve the data under which conditions? And because different people will provide, and organizations will provide the, 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 the data with different access policies, and uh, we will see that we have the data in heterogeneous formats. formats. Okay, so, and we need to, 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 un to understand the language, we need to understand the different de detail levels in the sense that sometimes some providers could provide with a lot of granularity, which is very, speci very specific data, other high level data, we need to understand also this context. And, and this is the main part of the process. And, and, and the more we, we iterate in these three activities, the better will be later on the task performed by the artificial intelligence programs. So when I have the data fully prepared, I, I go into modeling. And for modeling, we can use three type of uh, techniques. I forgot the, the, the last one, ontologies, machine learning, and, and the, the deep learning is not on, on the slides, but we have these three techniques. And of course, we need to evaluate the consistency, completeness, of, of the model that we have created with regards to the data. Let's say if the models represent completely the set of the data that, that I have. I deploy it and then I can make data analytics on, on, on that. So, so at least in this part of modeling, evaluation, and, and data analytics we are, we are using, and also in the integration, artificial intelligence techniques. And this is an example that was made by, by a company like more than 10 years ago where, where they integrated in the, using the, in, in the city of, 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 of London, they integrated data coming from open source uh, sources and also from closed sources. So, so there you can see that, uh, that I mean, this is, this is old. I mean, this is, has many, many years, so, so you can see they are where the, the semaphores are located, the toilets, we, we, uh, by aggregating the data coming from open sources, the average salary of, of the people in this area was calculated, also the unemployment rate, the crime rates, the electricity consumption. So let's say this is a step I mean, this is, this is not a digital twin, but, but let's say this is, this is a representation of, 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 uh, on, 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 on the map of data in, from a particular city, okay? Okay, so, uh, and, uh, and also in real time, you can see there the tweets 
and, uh, and the comments that, that people are, are providing. So here in the middle is Buckingham Palace. So you can see that, that in that case, only two, two tweets were inside the, <laughs> the palace. Okay, so, so, so let, let's go. So, so, so now that we have seen that we have a lot of data in different forms and, and formats, let clarify a bit what does artificial intelligence do with the, the, the data. So, so artificial intelligence is not new. So artificial intelligence started in, in 1956 in the Dartmouth conference. And, and the goal of the artificial intelligence was to make machines clever. So remember that uh, in, in 1956, we had these big computers that the only thing that these computers made were calculation, executing mathematical formulas and working with, with numbers. And uh, at this time, the, the researchers like McCarthy, for instance, they said, okay, let's see if uh, machines can do some kind of processes that human beings can do, like identifying objects, being able of understanding the language, translating between languages, generating a test, for instance, okay? So because of the new computers that we, we have, artificial intelligence is, is, is already generated in, in, in the, is already generated and, and, and we have as users artificial intelligence in our hands. And we can recognize images, we can, uh, artificial intelligence programs can understand spoken commands, generate tests, analyze tests, translate, question answering system with the ch chat GPT, making recommendation of movies, food, and so on and so forth, making predictions, simulations, and whatever thing we can, we can imagine, okay? So, so right now everything is in, 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 many, in many devices, and because of that I said before that when, when thinking on digital twins, we also need to think of the, the people, like, like physical objects that are also generating a lot of, lot of data. Artificial intelligence also is in, in integrated in more um, in 21 century devices like drones, integrated in, in devices mm, for health purposes. I suppose that all of you have already read the person that start working again after having the spinal cord injury because it was measured the, the, the brain based on the brain signals, they were able using artificial intelligence to generate the same signal and help the people to work. And uh, now we are moving into extending the, the capacity of the human being with the, with the chip. So, 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 so we can say that in this, in, this, in this line, we can see that we started the artificial intelligence by, uh, with the goal of making pe uh, machines more clever and now what we are trying to do is to, to make people, even though more clever, by introducing the chips into, into, into our, our brains. So this is, has a lot of philosoph philosophical debate and moral debate and so on and so forth. This is not the goal of this talk, okay? So what an artificial intelligence system is doing? This slide is also really, really important because at the end, any, any application that, that you will build in the, in, in the digital twin world, it will perceive the environment. And perception of the environment is, is done through data acquisition by sensors or by cameras or by analyzing what is written in a test or by analyzing what is in a map, okay? So, 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 so we have uh, a structured data and a structured data, semi-structured data. With the, 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 the intelligent system has a model, okay, a model of the world. And we will see later on that we have three techniques for, for, building, for building models, okay? So with the data and the model, the system is able of reasoning, processing the information, 
and making a decision. Okay? And uh, the decision impacts the real world in the case of the drone, okay? And also in the digital world because because whatever the machine is doing on physical needs to be stored into the digital in order to have both uh, system, let's say, aligned and with the same information. And, uh, and, uh, and also, we can go further and the system can also learn and adapt the, the behavior, okay? And, uh, and uh, these models are based on, on rules or on, on words, on ontologies, or they are based on numerical models. So, so, so right now, we don't have a general artificial intelligence. What we have are a specific artificial intelligence <coughs> programs and applications that are able to solve a specific task. And by aggregation of this different arti this artificial intelligence, we will be able of generating more complex programs and systems that will do more intelligent things. But artificial intelligence cannot go alone because we are also advancing at the same time that Internet of Things, uh, the next generation chips, the supercomputers, the sensors, the robotics, the cloud. Okay, so, so, so I in order to have uh, uh, the artificial intelligence already prepared and ready to be used, the, 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 we need an ecosystem of, of technologies. And, and, and we cannot apply artificial intelligence if, the, 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 if, if, if we don't have already digitalized the domain in which we want to apply the artificial intelligence. So digitalization is first, and then artificial intelligence goes after, after, after that. So in order to have and to build an, an intelligent system, we need the, the computing infrastructure, we need the data, we have seen a lot about that. We need data providers, we have seen the data providers, and the most important parts are the models and the algorithms. So, so, so right now, it seems that artificial intelligence is only the generative AI and, and uh, the GPT and the, and the foundational models. No, I mean, artificial intelligence is the techniques that allow the system to reason and explain. And for that, we have the techniques of knowledge representation and reasoning. We have those <coughs> techniques that are able to learn. And uh, we talk that the techniques related with machine learning. And also, we have the generative AI, which are based on the deep uh, learning techniques. So when, when we are talking about knowledge representation and reasoning, we, we are using words and we are using ontologies just for creating these models, and these models are based on, on logic, okay, not, not number. So when we are integrating the data and using ontologies, we, it, it is, you, you can think on databases, but they are really, really far more advanced than databases. So we are using, uh, we are using words and, and logic for, for reasoning. When we are using machine learning, what we are doing is using some kind of algorithms that allows us to generate numerical patterns. All of us, we are engineers, and we don't need to explain what, are, what is a numerical pattern. And, and when we are using generative AI, we are using algorithms based on multiple layers of artificial neural networks. So I will go in just, just to provide some thoughts about, about that. If I'm using numerical models, the algorithms produce the formula, produce the model. And one, what is that? Can you explain what is that? No. If I say and I use words, if I use ontologies and I say that it is, the origin is a tree, it is a fruit, it is, the size is, is 10 centimeters or less, the color is red, we all know that it is a, an apple, okay? 
So, so the difference between using the machine learning or using the ontologies is that that with 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 the ontologies, which is on the, the symbolic apple, we are able to to explain what we are representing in the digital in the digital world. We can make reasoning with that. We can explain the results. These are the pros. Which one are the cons? That we cannot build this model automatically. So this implies that they are costly, and uh, it consumes a lot of uh, human resources. But it is very good for one task, data integration and reason and explainability. And if we go into the numerical models, they use big data, they learn the patterns, the, the accuracy of the system is really high because if it is trained with a lot of data, but it, it could have some problems if the data that we are using are biased and it is very difficult for them to explain the outcomes. Why? Because I'm just executing this formula and the formula says that you are in this cluster or in the other, in the other cluster. Okay? So, so, so if, if you use uh, machine learning, it's be, it is very good. The accuracy will be it will be very high. The the performance and the scalability too. And and if you have the data, you can build very quickly, let's say, the an, an application. But but the problem is that you cannot explain. So, re, re going into the ontologies, I I I if you already taken some of the courses, you you will see that there are some ontologies for representing. Uh, the, the data coming from, from sensors. In, in particular, the Semantic Sensor Network Ontology was developed by my group and, uh, and was standardized by the W3C consortium several, several years ago. And now there is another professor at Universidad Politécnica, Raúl García Castro, who is uh, uh, specialized in the Semantic Network Ontologies into the Etsy and Zaref Ontologies and specializing for different verticals and creating um, uh, ontologies for agriculture, environment, energy. So, so this is an example of the Sare for City uh, ontologies, where we are providing the terminology in about different sources of information being in in the city. Let's say for modeling the traffic, the addresses, the parking, the transport, etc. Okay. We also have another, as I said before. We also have the neural networks, which is the base of the deep learning approach. And uh, so, so, th so we have a neuron over there. The neuron has an input, and it has one output. Okay, so we have here different inputs of the neuron. We also have the the arrows, and here we are going to make a calculation. The calculation is very simple. It is just multiplying the input with the weight and the so very very easy the formula and so 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 the computer calculates it very easily and we have also a function that allows us to convert the formula into one zero or one or, or one so so we could say if See, if, if the function is, if, if the sum is, is lower than 0 0.3, the output will be 0. If it is over 0 0.3, it will be 1. Okay? So I do the calculation. I say, okay, I have these inputs and I have these weights. I do the, the calculation 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 4, 1, 0, 4, 0, 2, 1. In that case, it could be 0 0.6. So the output will be. So this is one one neuron. When we are talking about neural networks, we are talking about interconnected uh, neurons. So so in that case, what we have this blue, this point in, in blue, is one of these points in, in in blue. Okay. So 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 then we are propagating the zeros and, and one, and at the end getting the, the formula. And we are when we are talking about deep learning so we are going about uh, we are talking about neural networks in, in in different layers with very very complex algorithms okay but but at the end again this deep learning and machine learning are working with formula they are not working with 
with words. So, so, so these models and, and algorithms, as I, as I said before, the for knowledge representation and reasoning, the ontologies allows us to integrate the data, deduce new data from other data, and being able of detecting inconsistencies, inconsistencies and contradictory information in, in data. With machine learning, so, so you can use these machine learning techniques for recommending uh, content. You can also, for personalized news, let's say imagine the hospital and the digital twin of, of the hospital, doing predictive analysis, predictive maintenance, and so on and so forth. And if you go into deep learning, what we have is our, all this program that generate new images, new videos, new new test. Okay, so and it, at the end, it is called generative AI because from a lot of images, the programs generate new images. It is called generative AI because from test, the programs generate new test and translate into into in, into into other languages. And, and, and please don't forget that they are using numerical models, so probabilities. So, so, so we are not using words. So, so at some point when we are using this generative AI, we, we are losing the, the, the meaning of the original document because after a long process, everything can be transformed. And because of that, the chat GPT sometimes has the, um, many times it has some kind of hallucination. Okay, and, uh, and uh, the hype came in 2022 and 2023, so you can go into the AI index report from Stanford and you can see there, so, so the, different, the different technologies being proposed by the big tech for writing computer programs, generating images from tests, and, and so on and so forth. So let's go back into the, into the digital twins, okay? So we are collecting the data. We are adding, so think on the example. So we have something, uh, raw data, which is something which is read. We are adding to the data the context information that is a traffic light in the intersection between two famous streets, streets in, in, in Madrid in a particular date and a particular time. This is the context, the metadata. With that data, and context information, we generate models, and the models could be symbolic, let's say it could be ontologies, or it could be machine learning models or deep learning models, and from that, from the data, I could infer that the traffic light stays in red during two minutes during the last hours. And based on that, I can reason, I can make decisions, I can predict, I can say that I need to change the, the, the frequency of the semaphore, okay? So, so, so but, but this is the, the, the usual process. So we are always analyzing the past, which is the data that we have in order to influence the future, okay? And in order to, 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 to produce a lot of data, the European Commission is saying, okay, let's go to create the data spaces, okay? And, 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 and the, data, the data spaces, um, let's say, is, is the, the sum of the, uh, is the addition of the raw data with the context. And, and, and the knowledge spaces is the place where we are building this knowledge, these models, and creating the, the, the decision, okay? So, so, so at the end, all this data is helping and it is very important, this verb, helping humans in the decision making. It is not a matter of substituting humans for doing quicker and cheaper. It is a matter of helping people in making decisions. So, 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 so I see Raul over there. So, so, so Raul is the, the expert on, on Saref, the ontologist of Saref, and this, the attribution of this picture is, is to him. So, so we have the, 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 the physical, we have the physical world, 
with a lot of data coming from different sources. So you can see here the, the sensor data, the data, the documents, the personal data. Don't forget the person on this. We, with the data that we have coming from the, from the, the physical objects that we are monitoring, we can complement and extend with data from the European data portal, with data from particular companies, and on top of that, we can create different views depending on what we are interested on. So if we are interested on how people move, so we can, we can create uh, views for, for see how things, uh, how things, m how people moved in, in, in the area or, 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 or making control of the indoor in case of COVID. And with the AI models, so we can build the applications that exploit the, the, the data, okay? Okay, so let's go into the third part, and I finish in, in a few minutes. So, so, so we have the regulation, what can we do with the data? So it depends on where we have the, the, the data. So we know that China, the United States, and the European Commission behaves and have legislation in, 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 different, in different ways. The point is that as far as we advance in the digitalization, any time we have more users, more data, we are looking for more efficiency, we have more addiction because we have more applications that we use for forever and, and we sh should have some cautions because sometimes mm, we should think about where, where are the legal limits, economic, social, politics, privacy, security, cybersecurity, energy consumption, and so on and, and so forth. So the European Commission started with the regulation, with the General Data Protection Regulation. Now we, we have the AU AI Act, which is the, the first regulation on artificial intelligence. A few months ago, uh, President Biden already provided the executive order on safe, secure, and trustworthy artificial intelligence. And in November, we also have the Bletchley Declaration of, of Countries, okay? So, so these are documents to to, to read before applying artificial intelligence. So regarding the AIAT, which is the, the one being promoted by Euro the European Commission, the aim is to benefit people and society. In order, uh, the, 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 the goal is that AI should be robust, to provide legal security, to promote a single market, should be fair, and should be able to explain why a particular decision was, was taken. Important is that, that this corpus of, or this law is based on, on previous laws like the GDPR, the intellectual property right, some laws re regarding with the reuse or sharing of, of data, and, uh, and the legislation is risk-oriented. So there are some applications that will be unacceptable with well, an acceptable risk, which is everything related with facial recognition, so, so we cannot be uh, just walking on the school or in the Plaza de España or in the Retiro Park and, and then being annotated so as one is going over there, no. no. So, this, so this is forbidden in the, in the, European, in the European law, unless there is a, a judge that says that, that, that a program, an artificial intelligence program should be run on a particular date, on a particular uh, segment, okay? We also have the, the it, it, it will be unacceptable, the social scoring like we have in, like the Chinese people have, okay? That say you are a good citizen or bad citizens because you do this or, 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 or that. There are other kind of application of high risk, um, which are related with medical diagnosis, autonomous car, law enforcement, and so on and so forth. And this application should have and should keep the, the, the properties end to end. I mean, from, from, from the day, the, I mean, the, 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 they are put in operation until the day they are re retired from, from, from the market. We have level three, which are applications with limited risk, which are applications that allow us, that allow uh, to recognize uh, emotions or, or um, uh, applications that uh, generate the fakes, chatbots, and, uh, and finally we, we have other applications that are of minimal risk, 
which are applications that, that uh, allows to, to predict failures, for instance, in, in machines. So the message is to take home is that please build on top of standards. W3C and Etsy already have a lot of ontologies for allow you to represent uh, the data. Artificial intelligence can help in many different ways in reasoning and explanation, making decisions, predictions, simulations, and, and learning. Data interoperability goes beyond the technical layer. Don't forget the citizens that are also generating a lot of data and, 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 and please at the end be compliant with the, with the legislation. So, so thank you so much for, for, for your attention. Nacho, no sé si hay preguntas o no. Uh, f thank you, uh, Suntian, for, for your lecture. Very interesting. Uh, I, I have maybe a naive question about to uh, talk about uh, data and uh, connections and, um, and standards. And uh, my naive question is about um, what is a private uh, provider of software or sensor? Um, do they lobby a lot to push their own uh, definition of standards? And how can uh, socially be the, the Together, we can like agree uh, on uh, which standard to use when you have different companies, private companies, pushing for their solution because they want to. They don't want to remake what they've yeah. done, actually. I mean, in, in, in the case of, of, of sensors, I mean, the we, mm, particular Raúl uh, was working with the sensor network ontologies, and it took like three years to to go into the standardization process. I mean, to reach con uh, agreement between the coming from the academia and also with can companies to, to reach to reach consensus. And but this is one of them. W3C, they provide vocabularies for representing the, the data <coughs> and also languages for 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 writing down the 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 data. Uh, and of course the in Europe the Etsy should be one of the, the ontologies in that case to to be reused. It is not simple to, to, to reach this kind of consensus and, and uh, we need this kind of standardization bodies. And from the academia perspective, uh, this is a big job because, because you, you, you spend like two years, three years just pushing a standardization and, uh, and at the end this doesn't provide many papers. Yeah. But at the end you have the, the, the standard and uh, in, in, in the case on, uh, of our group, so we we people know that if they want interoperability and and data integration at, at the end the ontology engineering group will provide the the solution thank you thank you any other question so thank you. Oh. Hello. Uh, good morning uh, I'm not a student, sorry. Uh, uh, I work in the VDTA and uh, we had developed some privacy metrics uh, regarding uh, building uh, stuff in the digital twins. What is the importance of privacy in all the, this landscape of uh, artificial intelligence? That is my question. So privacy. Privacy, yeah. Okay. So, so let's say the i mean all of us we are forced to use the and to follow and complain with the with the with the gdpr the the, the approach that we are taking on 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 research is to use another standard from the w3c consortium which is odrl which is open digital right language odrl that allows to represent the the policies and allows to represent in, in, in a digital way in, 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 in the sense that a machine just by analyzing the policies that you have put on a particular data can know if you can use or you cannot not use and under which condition this particular data. So so 
So, so, so let's say we, we, we should think that the data are not co to be consumed just by our own organization or through the web page. We need to think further and to see that the data from my company or from my application could be called <coughs> or demanded by another application or by another company. And, and for doing that, I need to represent in a, in a machine processable way the access condition to the data. And, and access condition implies privacy and also the licenses of, of use if the data is not related with, with privacy. So in that case, o ODRL allows to represent both things. Thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, I just wanted to to ask if you have, if you could share with us some thoughts about uh, the impact in sustainability that you mentioned there. Yeah. There are concerns. If you could. Uh, yeah, the the I, I had one slide, but at the end I I, I remove it. So 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 we should think on on, on several things. The, the 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 first one is that. It, um, it is require a lot of energy in building these powerful machines. The second point is that artificial intelligence and digitalization needs data. This data needs to be stored. So this is also energy consumption. If we are using ontologies, the energy consumption of the process is not too high. It's almost nothing, okay, normal. But if you, we are using a machine learning, and in particular, deep neural networks the, for building, for instance, the foundational models, the energy consumption is extremely high. So the, the, this index from, from Stanford correlates the, the number of parameters that a large language model has with the, the, the energy consumption being mm, taken. Okay, and, uh, and we shouldn't forget that all these machines need to be in a cold environment. So there is also the energy consumption associated to, to that. That could be related either with the el electricity and, and also with the, the water, if, if it is used water for, for, for that. There is some, some studies from uh, ACM the first paper was published in 2020, and the name is Green AI. I don't remember the names of the, the authors, but if you look Green AI, ACM, you get the paper. And it was like like building one of these models. The 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 CO2 fingerprint was like traveling uh, like 32 times from from New York and and, and Tokyo, going for one hour. Okay. Thank you very much, Asun. Uh, we have gone beyond our time, but uh, it was so interesting that I didn't want to, 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 to interrupt it. Thank you very much.
after this amazing presentation of the vice rector, I liked it so much. I'm going to present my friend uh, Edward. But first of all, I want to thank you all for being here. I see a lot of friends and all the students, and I'm very happy to have you all here. These days are challenging for us, so it's, uh, we appreciate it a lot that you are here. Okay. And Edward, Edward is a research and development manager at IDP Group, based on his both uh, uh, scientific uh, knowledge, his, uh, he studied physics, and uh, his more than 25 years of experience in business development across several markets, ranging from programming, communication and design, up to electronics, technology transfer, and this uh, sector, ICO sector. Um, after that, he's uh, acting as the president of the Building Digital Twin Association, which maybe he will uh, detail in, uh, in, his, in his presentation, and is convener of the European Committee of Normalization in the, in the, in the TC442, in the Working Group 9, Digital Twins in the Built Environment that we share. And Okay, I want to express my gratitude for him being here. He, he has uh, come only for this, so thank you. And above all, uh, his efforts to boosting these digital twins in the construction field. He's really encouraging this in the whole Europe, in Spain especially. And I think uh, that uh, we, have, uh, we are very lucky to have him here, and he, uh, and he will, he will uh, tell you some very interesting things. So um, thank you again, and, and you can start. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Marcos and Fernando, for, for inviting me. OK, I think it's a really great opportunity. And honestly, it's, uh, it's been a pleasure also to see the presentation of Asun. I think that uh, of Asun Thion, the professor. So I really understood many things that I've been hearing many years about ontologies, about the pyramid of the knowledge. Okay, so it's been really, really interesting to 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 learn much more. Okay, for for an expert. Let me explain a little bit. Uh, who I am. Okay, I'm the R&D manager of IDP Group. IDP Group is an, an Spanish engineering company. Okay, we started in 1998. Uh, right now we are a medium-sized company. We have more than 500 persons. Okay, in, and I think that will explain a little bit the origins of, of also of the BDTA and the Sphere project. Okay, the, the BDTA, the Building Digital Twin Association, it was created in 2020, okay, so it's quite, quite young, okay, with the vision of to, to, let's say, to back up the creation of a community for a future implementation of digital twins in the built environment across Europe, at least. Okay, and the origins of the BDTA was the Sphere project. Sphere project was an Horizon 2020 project the biggest of the energy efficient buildings uh, uh, PPP, private uh, partnership, uh, public private partnership from the European Commission. Um, and so far I know it was the first one talking about the digital twins in the, in the built environment. And the BDTA was born in this cradle, okay, because, you know, in, 2007, in 2017, 2018, we were discu having discussions o about what is a digital twin how we can implement that into the built environment. For example, we reach the concept of the platform as a service, how we can get this date, data ingestion, the data flows that we can manage, okay? We were start to talk about ontologies and how we can use ontologies and even create an open API. Okay, obviously getting clear the users, getting clear how we can get this product life cycle management inside of the, of the built environment, of the buildings and the civil constructions, okay, which is a, a really, let's say, I think nowadays I'm going to places and they have the same discussions we had many, many years ago. So it's an ongoing discussion, of course, okay, but I think it's really important to say that, uh, that we reach some conclusions, okay, and we try to extract that, okay, with the creation of the BDTA. Okay, actually these are the, the founding members, okay, of the of the BDTA, okay, and we had at least four 
uh, strategic axis, okay, that it would be first methodology, I think methodology is key to see how we can reach, okay, uh, a minimum consensus, okay, that will support the future standards in definitions, in new roles, in processes, okay, and obviously linking with other standards like, like uh, it was pointed before, okay. Uh, publications, obviously, uh, that's part of our axis, okay, and I recommend or I, uh, I think they are fully open, okay, so you can just go to the website and download it. And on the future, working in trainings, but most of all to create a community, okay, I think that it's the most important thing, and since 2021, uh, we started to uh, generate the first uh, international congress in building digital twins. Okay, the first one with the COVID situation was online. Okay, but since 2022, it was in a hybrid mode. Okay, and actually the next one, let me make some publicity. Okay, the next one is in April, uh, again in Barcelona. Okay, because last year was in Antwerp, and uh, the 17th of April, and we are doing that in conjunction also with the Digital Building Permits Conference. So at the end, that's the publications that we did. Okay, but let's let's move on to the to the digital twin concept and and the origins. I think that it's key to understand what a digital twin is to go on to the to the to the origins. And I think for this, for me, this is like the keystone. Okay, the the, the paper that let's say uh, summarizes uh, the, the learnings from Michael Reeves, okay? Professor Michael Reeves from University of Florida was the first one reaching the concept, okay? And he has been an, one of the most active persons in, in moving that, okay? And moving it forward, okay? Uh, and at the end, it was presented in, in, a, in a product life cycle management uh, congress. I think that's important, okay, because uh, from the point of view of, of, of what a digital twin is really interesting to understand why we are doing this effort, okay? And this effort is to help, okay, to manage, to, to take better decisions during the life cycle of an asset, of a real asset, okay? So, and this is what we, or, or he reached that concept, okay? So it give us to let's say, to move forward from the idea of just having a 3D model or an information model even, okay, or having an IoT connected with that, okay, or having a simulation model, we have to move forward, okay, at the end is having a digital model plus the IoT, of course, that's clear, but also having a method to track a method or a technology like it might be artificial intelligence, for example, for harmonizing the data and keep, it, keep that updated. Actually, this is like interoperability is the, 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 the new great thing in data scientists, of course, but in, in particular going into, into the digital twins. Okay, but that it will help us to keep track of how the real asset is evolving and providing us also with this knowledge, okay, that was at the top of the pyramid. Uh, so it will allow us to forecast the future, okay, and learn from that. Uh, in those early years, okay, and we are talking about 2002, it was firstly mentioned, okay, in 2008, nine appears the first, uh, the first papers, I think that's one of the first ones, okay, uh, and they were firstly applied in aerospace, aerospace and defense, okay, it's true that since uh, Michael Reeves is based in, in Florida, obviously the, the NASA, okay, was, NASA was really uh, close to that and started to embrace. And it's true that focus, if we take a look into what is happening in, in, in aerospatial and defense, is probably where we are finding, as well as manufacturing, the most advanced uh, implementations of digital twins. In terms of manufacturing, the first ISO that, uh, that we have found, okay, is precisely on digital twins in the framework on, or for manufacturing. This ISO appeared in 2021. Uh, it's a short one, okay, but it's, it's, it's for a cast, okay, uh, a future, future set of documents based on those overview and general principles. And this is something that we are looking at, uh, uh, really close. On this, 
let me say also this is interesting because since they are focusing on manufacturing, they are focusing on the shop floor, on the process, on the manufacturing process, okay? And when we are thinking in, in assets in the built environment or the civil engineering environment, we are thinking in places, okay? So, so when they are thinking in a digital twin of a factory, they are thinking in the process. They are not thinking in the envelope, okay? But obviously there are both parts, okay? And since they are thinking in the process, they are thinking more in cyber physical systems, okay, how they can use to improve the, the process. But even in this ISO, it's mentioned, okay, that you can have the vision also of a product, okay? So it links widely well with the product lifecycle management that was appointed before. So let's move to uh, building digital twin environments, okay, to, to have some examples. And for this, uh, let, me, uh, let me go to, uh, to data centers, okay? At, we at IDP, we have a, 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 new, a new area working on data centers. And, and honestly, seen from, from, from my learning inside of the company, I discovered that uh, many things that we were pointing at as the future is nowadays happening, okay, as a state of the art in, in the design and even manager, managing of data centers, okay? So at the end, I think it's the tip of the spear, okay? I don't know what is the configuration, uh, but at the end, they are not only having really well-designed infrastructures, they have also simulations tailored with that with a really huge monitoring, okay? So even you can go inside of the rack and know what is happening even at CPU level, okay? And they are also linking, okay, with computer fluid dynamics, for example, uh, to understand how the heat flows around, the, around those server rooms, around those data centers. And they are linking that with the, with the sensors. And this is really interesting because this is something that in, in the Sphere project, okay, uh, we were discussing as a potential software in the loop. And that's really interesting because it's when you are able to calibrate the sensor with the simulation, the sensors help you to calibrate um, also the simulation, the simulation, I don't know if I'm repeating myself, but at the end is creating, okay, this loop that helps you, okay, or helps who is managing the, the asset uh, to, to trigger alarms and have a much better uh, information of what is happening. Okay, but in any case, as first step, okay, I think is this systems integration. On this, obviously, there is, I'm trying to explain, okay, to, to my, my colleagues at IDP about ontologies, but somehow I'm still, okay, struggling to understand, to make them understand how this could help their life, okay? But I'm sure that they will, that, that this will eventually come okay, to the engineers, to the architects who are designing the infrastructures, and afterwards, okay, to the people who is, construction, who is doing the construction, okay, and finally, who is operating and doing the maintenance. But what is clear is that we are right now working in creation of APIs, okay, and trying to share the data of, among different uh, applications with the facility management server, Okay, with what is happening from coming from the sensors, etc. Okay, so and actually that that's uh, uh, just a, a, an inter an slide of the of the interface of, of the web application that we have at at, at IDP that we develop uh, in inside of the Sphere project. Okay, that and which allow us to have this systems integration. Okay, obviously with the three D coming from the BIM model incorporating also uh, information coming from, from, from GIS, okay? And in the future, we are expecting to have also semantic search, um, using that for intelligent training systems, etc. Okay, with this I'm trying, I'm mixing, okay, not only capabilities that we already have, but capabilities that we can find in the future, okay, in, in the future of digital twins, okay? So at the end, for example, focusing on, on the purpose of energy consumption, okay, we can find Okay, uh, this, is, this is actually coming from the white paper too that we publish at the BDTA, okay? And this is, okay, uh, uh, what is happening, for example, some many years ago in terms of simulation and linking this simulation with the, with the, with the sensors, okay? To have a, an advanced control of what is happening, okay? Uh, as software in the loop inside of the CERN, okay? Obviously, 
This is nowadays happening in really key infrastructures, critical infrastructures, like might be the CERN, okay? But it will uh, percolate to, uh, let's say, not so big infrastructures in the future, okay? Another huge opportunity that opens to us in terms of the digital twins, of building digital twins, is the aggregation, okay? That was foretold by, by Michael Reeves, okay? With the concept of the digital twin aggregate, aggregates, okay? is when you are able to connect different digital twins, okay? It, they could be in different, uh, let's say, life cycle cycles, okay? At the end, it, it could change, and actually, uh, but this will allow to create future data lakes to have a better understanding of what is happening, okay? And of taking conclusions, okay? I always put the example, for example, in manufacturing, okay, that you can have, if you have your supply chain and this brings you uh, your car, okay, let's say uh, uh, ASEAT, uh, ASEAT Altea, okay? If you have all digital twins, instances of each SEAT Altea, it allows us to uh, infer potential defects or predictive maintenance, et cetera, et cetera, and even use this information for future designs, okay? But in the same way, we have the vertical aggregation, okay? So since we have different hierarchies, okay, you can have the digital twin of the Seat Altea, you can have the digital twin of the building, you can have the digital twin of the city, you can have even the digital twin of the persons, okay? This is another vertical that is growing a lot in healthcare, okay? So at the end, mixing all those things, okay, creating this vertical aggregation allow us for a much better understanding of what is happening. On the other hand, that's scary, okay, so it has to be uh, really, it's really important to have the ethics of all this, okay, so, and for example, this is an example of how you can use that, okay, as a, as, uh, as an, in terms of building digital twins, as nodes of, of, of the smart grids of the future, okay, to, for a cast the demand, et cetera, et cetera, okay, so. In here I have a, a video, but I think that we have, we are a little bit uh, uh, running short of time, so, but at the end it's, it's an example of what we create in the, in, in the Sphere project. In this, let me also show you, okay, another project that we, as IDP, we are involved, which is the Beam to Twin, uh, led by the CSTB from, from, from France. Uh, and on this, it was generated another platform. In this platform, okay, it's based on 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 the things in core from from Orange. Uh, in in this includes okay a link with semantics. Uh, it was created a new ontology in this project. I actually, I think with Raúl is well aware of that because we were. Uh, I know that you are working in Cogito, which is a sister project. Okay, and we are trying to see what, which things we can do in terms of, of moving, uh, okay, uh, of generate a federate knowledge, okay, of all them. Uh, and this, let's say this platform brings us also the connection with different services, okay? So you can have different services focusing on what is happening in the, what I think it's the, mo what I think, I think it's, it's clear is the most difficult part in terms of the life of the of of the uh, uh, an asset of the built environment, which is the construction phase. Okay, this construction phase it could be from a new building, it could be a major retrofitting, but it's clear that keeping track what is happening, okay, in the construction side, okay, I think that you came from the sector and you know that it's really hard to have keeping track what is happening on let's say on a daily basis. I don't want to go even further than that. But this project is launching a set of tools, okay? So you can have uh, information of what is happening, adding a surface, for example, for safety control, if I, in terms of knowing where the people is, having predictions, and trying to avoid, okay, uh, risk situations and hazardous practices, okay? Having optimization and equipment, that's really important to have also in civil, in civil works, okay? and integrating the production planning, okay, and getting, okay, here you can have some slides also of the dashboard, okay, and, and, and that's the linked data approach that I was mentioning uh, before, okay, and when, when we are 
we are trying to use existing uh, existing standards in terms of ontologies and trying to build up an ontology network which is also supported by the BDTA although there are many many approaches on that okay in white paper 3 okay of the BDTA you can have some information so but let let me go for what is the current situation okay let's say that's that's the current challenges okay there are uh, the first point is that we we even have okay we do not have yet a clear or harmonized standardized definitions okay so when i'm going to congresses i'm still seeing a lot of people discussing what is a digital twin okay what are the purposes even with experts i have many discussions if there might be a digital twinning during design and construction or design and manufacturing okay this is a let's say a, a, a hot topic in some in some places okay so so we are right now in there okay so and this is actually one of the things that we want to first try to help to solve okay from the from the bdta uh, Another challenge is how we can bring digital twins, not only of new buildings, okay, that it should be easier, okay, talking buildings, but it could be civil infrastructures, but also of existing. If we are considering the, build, uh, the building stock, okay, of Europe, I think new buildings or new assets represents 1%, one, one okay, so that's, that's a tiny part, okay, how we which are going to be the mechanisms, and I'm trying to bring these mechanisms in, term, in terms of cost effective, okay, to allow a proper digitalization, okay, of the existing, uh, of the ex existing infrastructures. That's, that's a, key, an, a key question that we have to do. Keep in mind that I also have the experience of, at IDP of the implementation of BIM inside of our company we, I think we were one of the earliest in, in Spain, at least. <coughs> when I entered in, in IDP, I think we were uh, designing, okay, the first big Europe, uh, the, the big beam project, the, the company, which was the IKEA of, of Alfafaro in Valencia. Uh, and, and, it, and I was trying to explain to other customers the benefits of beam. And, and honestly, I'm still seeing a lot of reluctancy to implement BIM, okay? And if you come from civil engineering, I think that you know what I'm talking about, okay? Uh, it's really difficult to, to justify that this digitalization is cost effective. And mostly because you need a change of, my, of, of the mindset of the whole company, okay? And only when you have all this mindset and also the rest of the companies or the stakeholders that are involved with these assets is when you are starting to get a clear benefit. So another point, and this linked with this, okay, the low productivity and margin sector. Okay, that's what is happening in construction sector. The low, I think it's construction is the only sector that I have heard that has been decreasing their productivity in the last 40 years, okay? So it means that let me say that I think that there is a lot of room, okay, to, to improve. And I think digitalization has a, a lot to say on that, okay? The, 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 the following point, digitalization is still in process. I think we can find, even in, in, in different countries than, than Spain, across Europe, probably Scandinavia is much more advanced. Yeah, it's true, but if you go to even UK, Okay, you could find a really different uh, speeds in the implementation of BIM, okay, of the B uh, building information modeling. As well as it happens with the smart buildings, okay, and the IoT implementation. Because other thing that is something that uh, is happening sometimes is that people deploy sensors, but sensors tends to decalibrate. Okay, sometimes sensors in six months are not working properly. So if you are making a huge investment in putting sensors and finally they are not working, uh, you are not going to do it again. Okay, so this is what we are, for example, uh, backing a lot this concept of software in the loop, okay, that will help to keep track of what is happening with the sensors and the sensors 
giving you okay a feedback if your simulation is working or not okay so and finally linking with that the use of simulation models okay when when i first arrived uh, at, at idp and i saw how it was designed new terminals or, or you know railway terminals multimodal perfect really advanced and we started to use beam and have some supply chain simulation seeing how but my question was okay this is a 70 uh, millions investment 100 millions investment how you were doing before that you were not using simulation so how you get proof that this investment was going to work you know in manufacturing it's clear okay before manufacturing something you have many simulations in place so all these leave us or give us moving from beam okay to digital twin okay and including okay all these semantic approaches that has been told before uh, and getting also the real-time data and real-time simulation on this real-time simulation is really important okay because it's really difficult uh, really different uh, the types of there are many types of, of simulation, okay? And it changes a lot if you are talking about electrical simulation that you need real time means milliseconds, that if you are talking about energy or you are talking about uh, that it will, okay, uh, talk about hours, okay, of inertia, or you are talking about logistics, okay? In terms of logistics, you are talking about days, probably. Uh, so at the end, we need, okay, to have and in a clear interface as an, 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 an interoperability system, okay, to get all this data in a, in a way that will allow us to, to get this knowledge, okay, and to support one data with the other, okay. So, um, on this regard, I think the most advanced country right now in the world, in terms of at least to backing to the implementation of digital twins, I think it's UK. They are doing more or less the same that they did with beam implementation in back in 2010 okay the ministry of you of 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 civil uh, and infrastructures appear okay with a clear wish of backing the digitalization of the sector of the construction sector and infrastructures with beam okay and they did in 2020 with the digital twins they created the digital twin hub and from this, they are launching many interesting concepts like the Gemini principles that we are trying to be harmonized, fully harmonized with what they, what they propose. But also, this was from, the, from, from, last, from last year, okay? They launched this paper or this white paper regarding the Apollo protocol. When I was talking before about the vertical aggregation, this goes that way, okay, that will allow us or allow them, let's say, in, in UK, to connect with different digital twins of different things, okay? So if you are considering a railway and you have a digital twin of this railway and there are breaches in there and you have digital twins of breaches, obviously you need to connect them, but also you need to connect with the rolling stock and with the intermodal terminals, okay? So at the end is, okay, a lot of data of data set that you need to connect, different worlds that you need to connect, okay? and I'll that will allow us to avoid silos and decision making just seeing one thing okay we need to have this complete view and but but i think what is really important is that they have a really strong community and they also have the backing okay from the government to legislate in in that way focusing on what is happening in europe i mean uh I, in this okay when, I, when i'm talking about then UK is inside, okay, so, so at the end, okay, I'm saying that, but it's true that in terms of standardization, clearly UK is fully aligned with what, what is happening. And that's the technical committee 442, okay, what, uh, that, that Marcos has mentioned before, okay, and <coughs> this technical committee, okay, all these are the norms that has been uh, released coming from this technical committee. There are many groups, and I think this this was a really a, a clear milestone of on the life of the of the BDTA, when we presented okay with the help of UNE okay which is the, the the Spanish standardization body, we 
asked to the creation of the new working group, okay, inside of the technical committee, focusing on digital twins in the built environment. And I have to say it was, <coughs> it was welcome with a really, we had a really warm uh, welcome, okay, and it was approved by all the countries in, in Europe, okay, with a, with a solid yes. Okay, so this, these are the, the existing, okay, the existing groups, okay. The first one is focusing on terminology and, is, and the convenor is, is coming from BSI, from, from UK, okay. The working group two is the exchange information and is led by, the secretary is led by Dean from Germany. Um, I think the work package two and three, uh, three is led by, by the Austrian standards body, I don't remember the name, okay, but from work package two and three, okay, all the ISO 19650, I don't know if you're aware, okay, of, of these five documents that was released since 2019, 2018, okay, helping to harmonize how we can implement BIM, okay, and how this could be also exchange the information, okay, which is actually the, 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 the working group two. And this working group two, for example, is working really close also with what is happening in Building Smart. I don't know if you, if you know them, but Building Smart is like the association helping to create uh, on support BIM since 25 years, 30 years. Actually, the IFC format, the industry foundation classes comes not from, not from them, Okay, because it was a manufacturing standard, but it appeared okay, of, of extremely good use in construction sector, okay, as, as has been, and is really well, uh, let's say, used, intensively used okay, in, in, in the last years, and, and I expect to, to be a, a future uh, format for, for, for smart cities, okay, infrastructures and cities. Uh, uh, sorry, and buildings. Uh, there are also working group four for support dictionaries. This is a coordination, okay? There are infrastructures, that probably that could be the, the most important one for, 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 for the audience that we have today, okay? That is led by AFNOR, okay, from France. Uh, the horizontal role that tries to harmonize with working group eight, we have a really close collaboration uh, liaison, okay, because since they are talking about competence, uh, they are talking about the future roles in, in, in both, let's say, in the, in the construction sector, okay, in the built environment. So, for example, when we are talking about a, uh, uh, sorry, a, a BIM manager, okay, or a coordinator BIM, this is something that it would be in their purview. Other thing is that it takes a, it, it's, it's so implemented in, let, let me explain properly. There are so many countries with different speeds, okay, that right now trying to harmonize everything in Europe is really hard. For example, in Italy, they, because that's led by, by Angelo, okay, in Italy, uh, they just released a new uh, Italian standard, okay, that describes perfectly well what could be, what must be the roles, okay, of any company to, uh, to have a proper implementation of the ISO 19650, okay? But those names, okay, and those, uh, uh, it, it has a, a, a legal representation or it will have a legal representation in the same way, okay, that uh, uh, I'll, I'll, um, um, a construction supervisor has in many countries, okay? In Spain, it would be director de obra, okay? It has a legal, okay, in, in uh, let's say, uh, purview of what you have to do, okay? Which are your, uh, the things that uh, you are responsible for, okay? So, but let's say, harmonizing that at European level is gonna, is gonna take a while. But obviously, since we were in, uh, in, in the white paper I mentioned before, okay, we were appointing to new potential roles, okay, so this was seen as a really interesting thing for the future, okay, of the digital twin. So if we can talk about the digital twin manager, if we can talk about the digital twin simulation manager, configuration manager, there are roles that for sure will appear. If we are going to UK, for example, in the UK ecosystem, they generate 
in two years ago, they generated like 20 new roles. One of, the, one, one of them is the ontologist, which is the data steward, the ontologist, and I don't remember. Okay, I don't know if we need so many. Okay, but what is clear is that they did a really interesting exercise. Okay, so let me reach to working group nine. Okay, that's the digital twins in the built environment. Okay, and the scope, okay, that you can see here, that is more or less what we, the same scope that we have at, at the BDTA. But since 2023, what we have done, okay? First, I'm really proud, it's still under votation, okay, but let me touch wood, that's really Spanish, <laughs> okay, the um, uh, procedure, but at the end, I, I think it will go forward, uh, but this, a technical report. Uh, keep in mind that in, in, in European standardization, there are like three levels. First is technical report, okay, which is kind of informative. You have the technical specification, which is like a pre-standard, and you have the European standard. Keep in mind that the difference between an European standard and an ISO, okay, is that an ISO is worldwide, but you are not obliged to, to implement it. Okay, you only implement it if you want as a company, okay? But if you have a SEN standard, it means that, okay, that when you are plugging, okay, it, it, that's regulated by SEN, okay? If, for example, the iPhone is going to use the USB-C is because, okay, the European standard means that all the smartphones needs to use, okay, this plug, okay? so. If we have a European standard, it means that it will be obliging, okay, in terms even of future legal uh, implementations, all the countries in Europe, okay? So I think this is really, is a challenge, okay? And obviously it's, it's, it's overwhelming if you want, okay? But I think it's a really interesting thing, okay, that we need, I think that we need to harmonize, okay, in Europe and try to prevent things like what is happening right now in, in the working group eight that I was mentioning. So, first we had this technical report, okay, and, the, and, <coughs> and it was launched uh, to the votation to see if it's accepted or not um, in last month, okay? So, I mean, it was 19th of January, I think, okay? So, it's quite out of the oven. Okay, so, and with this we are trying to focus on, okay, concept and definitions of digital twins applied to the built environment and its linkage with the building information modeling. So, let me focus first in the technical report, okay, because I think this, this has been a really interesting exercise. We ask, okay, as, 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 as convener of the, of the working group nine, I, I ask for uh, case studies, okay, so we were able to collect case studies. Actually, uh, from UPM, uh, we had one, one or two, 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 use ca two case studies, okay, and were accepted, okay. Keep in mind that the filter to accepting or not w was not based on if this is a digital twin or not, because we do not have the definitions, okay. We try to collect and learn from that, okay. And obviously what we were asking to have a minimum information, okay, to, to be able to extract potential use cases. And this is a distinguishing, okay, a, 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 let's say a distinction that we have to, <coughs> to explain, okay. It's not the same a case study than a use case. Okay, a use case can have different case studies. Okay, so at the end, what we collected was uh, where uh, case studies, and from there we're trying to extract as a conclusion, okay, uh, the use cases, the potential use cases that we may have in a in a digital twin in the in the built environment. Finally, we we collected up to 35 of ranging completely different uh, typologies, obviously in the in the construction sector or in the built environment, but ranging from irrigation systems to bridges, to buildings, residential or tertiary, ports, roads, um, probably I'm missing something, okay? Uh, but I think it, it was really interesting, okay, to have this exercise. 
And as con this is one of the, oh, let me <coughs> show you the one from, from that was delivered by, by, by IDP, by us, okay, which is the, the digital twin from the Puerto of Aviles. Uh, and in there we were explaining what we were using, okay, why, what was the intention or the purpose to, uh, to generate this digital twin. And on this, Okay, we tried to, or we, we tried, no, we, we did, uh, based on this collection, we sorted it out in different use cases. Okay, so we reached up to 13, and a 14 that is others, okay, where we didn't even know how to put it, okay. But for me, the most important uh, conclusion, and, and, and we, we were about to overstep, this conclusion, because it's so evident that that uh, that at first it was not even included, is that all the case studies were having more than one purpose. Okay, so or let's say the vast majority of them. Okay, so you have the main use and secondary use, and for me this is a really important conclusion. You are not going to generate a digital twin for doing just one thing. If you are doing this effort to generate, okay, data interoperability putting sensors, getting, okay, uh, stakeholders, categories and configurations so people will reach different data, okay, getting different applications is to have many, many different purposes, having different benefits, okay, and at the end, for me, it's one of the main, let's say, conclusions, okay, that, that we can extract from this exercise. Uh, when is going to be ready? If the votation say yes, okay, let me touch wood again. I think it in in two months, three months, it should be uh, published and be able to download in in, for example, in UNE or or or, or the standardization body, the national standardization body of, of of your of your country. In terms of Spain. It's true that we created a mirror committee to the working group nine, okay, so which I'm also coordinating, okay, as, as uh, trying to look for synergies. And on this, uh, we are trying also to generate, okay, these, these conclusions, but in terms of definitions. But let me focus, okay, as, as, as last point, okay, the, 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 the European standard that we are trying to, to that we are proposing, okay, and I'm, I'm expecting to, to have a yes, okay, it's been hard, okay, it's, now that it's like, okay, we, we are going to launch this, it's it taking me probably two years, or taking me, I mean, the whole group, okay, to reach for consensus, okay, because each country has different sensibilities, okay, each country has its own probably way to see to to see things okay so but finally we reach enough consensus to propose an european standard and also to which were the relevant relevant documents that we wanted to use as a background okay because at the end standardization is all is always understand what is the state of the art and from that trying to reach a consensus okay and on this we had the 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 sphere uh, the Sphere White Paper, okay, or the Building Digital Twin Association White Paper. I think that the definitions that we launched in that, using the taxonomy of microgrips, I think they are still com fully valid, and, and, and I think they are generic enough, so it's not bringing, let's say, too, m too much complexity, okay? So it will hinder, okay, future developments in digital twins, but helps to categorize and understand <laughs> Where are you? Where are we? Okay, so you can download it at will. Uh, also, the the position paper of building smart is something that we propose even more because they updated the first position paper they launched in 2020. They uh, made a, a, a a significant update in 2000, let's say last year. I think this is also open to download. This is a, another paper that we were proposing. This is a paper launched in 2020 by, by several key, uh, uh, key researchers from, from digitalization in built environment. 
like Ioannis Brilakis from University of Cambridge and Raphael Sachs. And I saw that I, I had the honor to, to, to participate a little bit okay, in, in, in this paper. I think it's a really interesting one in terms of how we can reach these digital twins in the, in the built environment. And of course, the ISO that I was mentioning before, <coughs> we need to understand what all the verticals are doing. Okay? So we need to be harmonized, okay? and not only with the principles. Okay? As I mentioned, there are many other documents that are upcoming. So we need to be aware okay, and create liaison with uh, this is something that I'm currently doing, okay, to generate liaisons with those groups and trying to be harmonized. Another document that appeared okay, in the meantime that we were trying to get launched this new working item okay, is a new ISO that appeared in November, I think it was, of 2023, that is proposing a set of concepts and terminology for digital twins. And this is digital twins in general. Okay? They are talking about manufacturing, aerospace, healthcare, obviously buildings and cities, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so uh, because natural resources is is another key point. Okay, and I think in terms of data spaces, this is this is clear. Okay, so how we can get a digital twin of oceans, of woods, forestry. Okay, and even the whole continent or the whole world. I think it's is Barcelona Supercomputing Center is is nowadays developing. A digital twin of the whole earth okay to try to understand the climate change so the hierarchy goes so high so <clears throat> this is where we are nowadays okay so I think this is extremely uh, engaging future okay of what is happening in digital twins in the built environment and on, in this I'm obviously including civil and I think it's it's a pleasure okay to have students in this field, okay, and I think it's it's a really good thing to see this master happening, okay, so so get the, our full support from the BBDA. Thank you so much. Ivan campos Gereta, and a student of the master. Um, I would like to know your opinion and, and see if match with mine is because uh, what I think that is the core of a digital twin is the model and, the, and maybe the, the sensors and the data that you put into the model. No? And with that, the output that you get with the model that will match with what you want. Okay? This match with the paper that you mentioned at the beginning, in which, uh, which were the origin of digital twins. No? Um, but what I see from the regulation of the European Union, what you mentioned, all start to begin with BIM. But BIM is building information system, no? so, or, or building information model. model. Uh, so it's geometry and data. No? But not, but not the model. The model is not included nowadays in into the VIM. So, uh, what I see about the geometry, the geometry can be an input or not. So, why force the people to do a 3D model of something if you he want to create a digital twin, for example, no? Uh, in in building in building area, there are software that. Uh, are well developed, no, like Revit or something like that, that uses uh, already um, elements that have been bad. For example, in civil engineering, if you want to model a, a, a bridge, it's a huge uh, effort to do that, no, in, in 3D. Uh, if you want, for example, to model the vibration of the, build, of the bridge, why are you going to, to do the bridge in 3D, for example, no? So why, why in the European Union the digital twin came from BIM? Why? So <laughs> if the beginning of all of this is the model and the data, because uh, Dr. Dr. Asuncion in his exposition talked many about the data, no? but 
I don't see very much about BIM there talking digital twins, no? So, I think that what do you think about that? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll try to, to answer by, okay, sequentially, okay? First, BIM, it makes sense if you are focusing in a building, okay? If you are moving into a linear infrastructure, probably it's less worthy to bring much effort on that, okay? Mm -hmm. So probably you must focus on GIS, okay? And the, the same happened with cities. Okay, so if you are targeting a city or the ocean, you must move to GIS uh, data sets. Okay, so it makes not much sense going to such granularity. Other thing, okay, when we are talking about BIM, and now I'm talking more as IDP, okay, as, as VDTA, uh, with BIM, uh, obviously, there are many approaches, okay? The spirit of using BIM is to have a collaborative, and, uh, let's say, environment where different people could be able to interact, okay, and get like a single source of truth, okay, and we'll make changes at real time. Let's say, in, ex in my experience, sometimes, and this is something that is happening right now, okay, so even people earning prices, okay, of such a nice beam model that they have done, okay, and the thing that they have done is just working as always, okay, and asking just for winning the price to someone to make the 3D, okay, so if you are going to do that, okay, obviously if you win the prize, perfect, okay, but it's from my point of view, okay, that would be like doing an advanced render, okay, so it it doesn't really provide you with the full benefits of a proper digitalization, okay? So, and this is based on, on our experience in, in at IDP, okay? But at the same way, I think since we have been working in, in with BIM and in 100% of our projects, whatever if it was a, a linear uh, infrastructure or if it was a tiny uh, retrofitting of a factory, Okay, we have been using that because at the company it was mm, the, the full uh, belief that it was the future and that we moved to, to go forward that way. What I could say is that at first we had several drawbacks and, some, and, and the worst were when we were using, let's say, the the UK environment, uh, LOD, no, I need an LOD 300 and a 400 of these, and because at the end, there are things that make sense to go to a really huge detail and a really huge granularity, and there are other things that not, okay? So if you are doing a railway, it makes no sense going to, uh, to the last, um, uh, how would you say that? Uh, yeah, so it makes no sense going that way. So there are things that you can put a lot of effort and have, let's say, not much benefit for not saying no, okay? And this is a little bit the, the, the Pareto, okay? So there are things that with 20% of the effort, you have 80% of the benefit. And this is, as a private company, this is always that you need to look for. But obviously, it takes, and I'm talking as company, okay, and seeing my, my colleagues in the production, okay, uh, they had need many flight hours, okay, working with these new tools, okay, uh, to reach this state of, of even talking with the customer, because the customers, no, I want a 400 level of definition. Why do you want this? Because it's not going to bring you any benefit. And the same happened with a lot of, of, of digitalization, okay, or simulation, okay? Do we need such a huge sim simulation of, I don't know, of, of an asset for something that you know that is how it's going to gonna happen? Probably not, okay? And with digital twins, I think it's more or less the same. Why BIM? Of course, in BIM, there has been many standards, as you could see, okay? And there, there are many even in terms of even semantics, okay? Uh, there are many things ongoing, okay? There is a solid community, 
not only from architects, but also from structural engineers, civil engineers, okay? So I think it's really important that we can build on top of that, okay? Because at the end, if not, we cannot start from the ground. And to your question, if a digital twin needs to have a 3D geometry or not, uh, there is a lot of controversy with that. The 3D geometry of the Earth is a little difficult. No? So. Um, yeah, but at the end you need some drawing to see what, it, you know, heat maps. In, in, for example, in GIS, okay, the, the visual representation is a field in, in its own. Okay, so because sometimes with a picture you have the famous sentence, okay, of more than 1,000 words, okay, so. And when you try to get different stakeholders trying to reach an agreement, okay, okay, the, the 3D representation or even the 2D representation brings a lot of value for sure. Thank you. Hi, thank you for the for this conference. My name is Santiago Fernandez. I'm also a student, and I wanted to ask you about. At which point is the CEN in the standardization of digital twins for cities? So I understand like cities are an aggregation of verticals and data spaces as you were mentioning. And, I, and as you were mentioning as well, like a standardization sometimes comes from different projects, case studies, and then you some have some conclusions. And I acknowledge that in the EU there has been a lot of a big push like with H2020 projects to lead and some standards with smart cities, but where are we? In with digital twins of cities? In, in digital twins of cities, they are much more advanced than construction sector, let's say, because they are coming mainly from GIS. And my feeling, for example, uh, last year we, uh, we were uh, in, in, the, in the GeoBeam conference that was part of the Geospatial World Forum in Rotterdam. Actually, it was a, a, a joint, a, a collaboration between the BDTA and the Building Digital Twin International Congress with them, okay? And what I saw in, in the both two days is that smart cities, okay, were embracing fully the digital twin concept, okay? And in terms, for example, of standardization, the, mostly using, for example, the data spaces mandate from, from, from the EC, okay? They are evolving many mechanisms, okay, to, to bring that. In terms of standards, it's true that it's something that I'm building up the, the liaison, so I cannot right now explain, but, but they are quite advanced, okay, and, and sooner than later, we need to establish a regular liaison with them to understand how we can connect, okay, with the things that they are doing, okay, so, so, but, but, what is clear is that they are much more advanced in terms of, of implementation and data interoperability, for example. Thank you very much. I'm afraid that uh, we, yeah. we are running very late for, for more questions, right? but uh, thank you so, so much. So interesting. Thank you very much. So we. <laughs> and during this first block, I would say that the, the, the main learning is how important ontology using a common language and a common standards uh, will be for the future uh, implementation of digital twins. Um, this is a great introduction for a course that we will be teaching in the, in the next uh, module, which is uh, Knowledge Representation by Maria, uh, who is actually here today. And so, so that, uh, that's, uh, that's a... Uh, um, a great introduction for that. Next block uh, will start at after the coffee break, and in the next block we will now focus more on the practical use cases of digital twins and introduced uh, by Thierry and, and Ineco. But uh, I think it's quite time for a coffee break. <laughs> we'll see you in 20 minutes.